Okay, thank you. So I'm really glad to share with you guys about the applications and techniques of artificial intelligence GIS. So actually AI is widely used in our life from driverless cars, the smartphone and smart speakers, or even make deep inroad into radiologies. All of those need the support of AI technologies. So how can AI and GIS be combined to solve the traditional ge geographical problems? So that's why we have this lecture here. And my lecture will cover this four part, the introduction of AI, the spatial machine learning and deep learning, uh, AI just workflow and the application of AI. So uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about AI, the artificial intelligence GIS, uh, sorry, the artificial intelligence is, can enable the computers to mimic the human intelligence. Like they can make the computers to perform the task that usually the human brain. And when we talk about AI, we actually talk about the machine learning and deep learning. So machine learning enable, enable the machines to improve a task with experience. And deep learning is a small part of machine learning as used in neural networks that perform, uh, that permit a machine to train itself to perform the task. And neural network is a, inspired by the human brain and we will talk more about them later. So in machine learning can be super, uh, can be classified in, into the supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning uh, can be training uh, the pre-labeled input to predict the predetermined output as need the label first. So the classification and regression are to classify, uh, are to, Mm, traditional supervised learning task. And in supervised use the unlabeled data, the clustering belongs to the unsupervised learning. And of course, deep learning go cross this tool. So uh, what's the difference or uh, how the classification or the, or the regression and clustering works? Uh, classification uh, algorithm used when the output features are uh, categoricals like true or false, yes or no. Uh, like in this picture, we try to classify our uh, email into spam or non spam email, right? Uh, regression used for continuous data. They try to uh, use the function to show the relationship between the X and Y. Like we want to uh, predict the housing price or do the weather forecasting. Uh, clustering, the only unsupervised. Uh, the, the task is try to uh, group the, the data based on their similarities. They try to make sure the object in the same group has the uh, highest, uh, highest similarities. And after machine learning, I see some, uh, some concepts about deep learning. So uh, this graph shows uh, a neural network as a really uh, simple neural network is, uh, is the abstract of biological process that take place in the brain and is mimic the firing of interconnected neurons in the response to stimuli. You can see the infrared transfer from one layer to the next and give us the production. So uh, the, the network can ingest a vast amount of input data, processing it through multiple layers of neurons that learn increasingly complex features of the data at each layer. And it's worth noting that it's the, called the hidden layers. Of course, there is only one hidden layers in this graph, but uh, actually in real life, we can have multiple hidden layers. Uh, these layers in the network allow uh, our models learn the features of the data in a so-called feature hierarchy, because the simple features like two pixels can be recombined from one layer to the next to form the more complex features, maybe a line. So that's why deep learning is more suitable for complex tasks than machine learning. So what's the difference between the machine learning and deep learning? The answer is at the feature extraction part. Um, for example, uh, for example, we want to see if there's a car in this picture, uh, with the use of machine learning, we need the expert to uh, extract the, the features first. The features can be the textures, the shape, the colors. Like we need to tell the machine that uh, 
in this picture, we have the wheels, we have the wind windows, so that's maybe a car. But in deep learning, the machine can learn it by themselves. They will uh, identify which uh, part will make up a car. It reduces a lot of human works. So uh, it seems like AI can do a lot of for us. It can reduce the repetitive human work, can reduce the non-intelligence work, and it can access the multiple data in one time and improve the work efficiency. So uh, can we apply the advantage of AI to GIS field? If we do so, uh, a new term comes out called AI-GIS. As the combination of AI with GIS and create a lot of opportunities that weren't possible before. For example, we can apply some deep learning uh, algorithm into GIS fields, like we can uh, see if there's a crossing in this image and we can find plants in a satellite image and do a land cover classification or uh, attract the buildings in a, in a, in a file. So, uh, here is the AI GIS technology system uh, we drew uh, from uh, bottom to up. We have the data layer, the library layer, the framework layer, and the function layer. So let's first focus on the GOA part uh, at, at the functional layer. So uh, we will cover some spatial machine learning, spatial deep learning, and processing tools, which, was, which is uh, corresponding to the second and third part third part of my lecture. So let's see uh, the spatial machine learning and deep learning. So these are some spatial machine learning operators or we can uh, or uh, we can see some spatial machine learning algorithms that usually use. We also classify them uh, based on the three main machine learning tasks. So let's see some of them. Uh, with the help of uh, clustering, uh, we can see whether the shared back parking position clustered. For example, at six to eight, 6 to 8 a.m., the, the bike just uh, park randomly around the road, right? But at 8 to 10 a.m., um, the bike was uh, gathered around the CBD and industrial park area. So, was the, uh, so uh, this analysis can be used to support effective allocation and management of the bicycle. And, uh, Classification can help us predict the suitable area for anomalous based on climate conditions. Uh, we take several factors into consideration, like the uh, diurnal range of main temperature, the lowest temperature in the coldest months, the average temperature of the hottest seasons. So, uh, we, uh, with the help of those factors, we can. Okay, right. so uh, yeah, the last. Uh, spatial machine learning task is the regression. So we can calculate housing price based on the inf infrastructure distribution. Because we all know that the housing price have some, have some uh, relationship with the uh, traffic conditions, education levels, and the medical services. And we can, with the help of regression algorithm, we can also st st stimuli the uh, uh, the land cover change. Like we can uh, use the land cover data from 2001 into 2007 to predict the land cover use, uh, to, land, to predict the land use at 2008. Uh, so this is, uh, these are the spatial deep learning operators. Like we can do a 3D analysis, the spatial temper analysis and the image analysis. Uh, and so uh, as the image analysis, we can extract some objects or detect some objects and do a binary or, more, <laughs> or multiple classification. So like we can predict the traffic flow with the help of uh, a GCN algorithm called uh, the, the, the graph convolutional neural network because this algorithm is uh, good for the uh, traffic network network data. And we can extract the road uh, in a rural area and extract the PV panels in the mountain to see if this place is, is good to be in a uh, uh, power station. And we can uh, also recognize the aircraft type. Uh, you can see different uh, the, the different color bounding box means the different aircraft type. <clears throat> uh, these are some common used deep learning 
models. We classify them based on the different operators and the different uh, deep learning frame, uh, framework. And uh, we, all, we all know that since AI application itself is a long-term process in what we multiple steps. So if we want to provide an end-to-end -end AI solutions, uh, we need to support a complex AI model process. So let's see the whole AIGS workflow. Uh, let's take deep learning workflow as an example. So uh, we, uh, to compose the whole workflow into three parts, the data preparation, the model construction, and the model application. So uh, at the, the data preparation part, we uh, uh, split them into two small, uh, small aspects, the, the simple measurement and the, and the training data generation. The simple measurement means we need to find a good way to manage our samples, like the labels in our image data. And after that, we can transfer them into a, uh, a training data that's suitable for model training. And then we construct our model and use our model to uh, pr uh, give us some predictions. This is the, uh, the image sample measurement tools in SuperMap software. So uh, we first uh, draw some labels and different colors means the different building type. And you can see well, after we draw, draw our labels, the uh, label type was uh, automatically uh, wrote into the attribute table. So, uh, let, and after that, we can uh, create the training data and construct our model and apply our model. So our, uh, our software have the uh, can can support all the uh, all the workflows, and we can use the uh, building extraction as an example to see the whole workflow. So first, we have to create a simple library for the building image, and then we we need to enter the label set. This means the uh, the different building type we want to extract it. And after that, we need to uh, draw the buildings and we need to uh, uh, choose the building type uh, as belongs to. And this is the uh, labels that we got. And this is the attribute table. You can see we have the label column uh, at the last. So after we have our uh, labels, we can create the training data. We do the model training, binary classification, and convert our result to vectors and uh, regularize our buildings. Because this is the how deep learning workflow. And um, in some real use, we found that uh, if we uh, the model inference result is not accurate enough. So sometimes we need to connect it with some post processing tools. Uh, those tools can be the uh, original groups the boundary clean and the shrink. Uh, this, this tool is for the raster data. And for vector data, we have the uh, aggregate tools, the regularized building tools. So let's see some of them and how it works. Aggregate region tools can aggregate the AI extraction result to obtain the building aggregation areas. And uh, regularized building tool is the Amazing tool that I want to share with you guys. So you can see this is the binary result. Uh, you can comp compare it with our original image. You can see the outline is, uh, is wrong and is, uh, is not accuracy, right? But after we use our, this tool, this is our result. Uh, you can see the uh, boundary can be uh, like horizontal and vertical. And of course we provide multiple a uh, regularization method, like the arbitrary angle, the circle angle, and the right diagonal angle regularization uh, method. You can choose the uh, appropriate regularization method that suitable for your data. And 
let's see the uh, road extraction uh, pest processing workflow. So after we extract the road, after we use the binary classification uh, tools, we uh, connect it with some uh, pest processing tools like the expand, the shrink, the majority filter, the thin, and the raster to vector data. So this is our original image, right? And this gray line are the uh, binary classification results. These are rows. And we expand, shrink, majority filter, and thin the raster to get this uh, red line. And then we convert them into a new vector to get our vector row data. So uh, you can see the connect connectivity of the road has been improved. So after we talk about deep learning workflow, so how, how about the machine learning workflow? Is this same as them? And the answer is yes. Uh, we can also uh, um, decompose uh, the whole workflow into this three, the model selection, model training, and model using. And to be detailed, uh, model selection can be split into the algorithm selection and the pre-processing. -pre and model training include the model training and model tuning. And, model, and, and the last one can be split into the explanation and model evaluation. So it's a lot of work uh, to do, right? So um, that's why we need to explore the automated machine learning modeling techniques, or we can call it auto ML, because um, if we want to have a uh, high accuracy model, we need to uh, have a lot of prior knowledge first, because like we need to know which machine learning algorithm is uh, good for our, for our data and how to tune our model. We need to know uh, uh, what what each uh, hyperparameter means, and so uh, most of the time it's hard for us to uh, get a good models from the scratch. And AutoML is designed to save time for us as the as abstract, uh, the common ways to uh, pre-process the data, the construct the machine learning models and the perform hyperperformance tuning to find the best model. So later I will use the uh, a real task or a real application to let you guys uh, know more about the automated machine learning modeling. Um, my last part is the applications of AI Jazz. At this part, uh, let's see how AI Jazz can help in real projects. Uh, the first one is the, uh, the criminal spatial temporal data mining. Uh, we all know that the crime have the obvious spatial and temporal patterns, uh, and AI will become effective ways of uh, crime prevention. So, uh, for example, we, with the help of spatial machine learning, we can uh, calculate the crime rate to uh, know the crime type and identify the crime hotspot area. Um, so how can we get this result? Uh, the, first, uh, the first one is collect the data. Uh, we all know that the crime rate have a strong correlation with the uh, residents' income, their education levels, and some traffic levels. So we collect this data and with the historical uh, crime data. After that, we summarize this data into the same geospatial unit or the geospatial uh, grade. And we uh, use some spatial machine learning algorithm to each geospatial unit to, uh, to uh, get some statistic results. So with the same idea, we can develop some uh, crime GIS system like to help us analysis the crime impact factors and predict the area with the high crime rates. So this can support the police deployment and carry out the effect, effective preventions. And the second application is about building intelligence inspection with the drone data. The drone data can help us identify the illegal buildings or the damaged buildings after a natural disaster. So our data is the, uh, has the uh, 0 0.05 meter resolution and cover about nine square kilometers. We uh, draw about 1,000 
uh, labels, then to get a better, better result, we use the pre-trained model that's trained from a uh, large open source data set. And let's uh, use this to uh, go over the whole workflow. So we have our training data and we uh, generate a model. And if, if we think this model is accurate enough, we can apply them in our test data to get our outcome. So this is our AI extraction results. Uh, you can see the most of the buildings has been ex extracted pretty well. And after the AI extraction, if we want to uh, do a summary statistic, like there is a county A and a county B, so we can use some zonal statistic or the summarize features tools to get the, the dis distribution of buildings in each region. And after that, we can do some our cartographic works like to uh, uh, make a map or a chart to have us to help us have a, have a better understanding of the spatial distribution. And the uh, final uh, application is the drought intensity prediction uh, that I talked before is to use the auto ML uh, to uh, predict the drought intensity. So with the help of this application, I uh, want to want you guys to have a basic understanding of, of uh, auto ML workflow through the, uh, so uh, our data is the, the, the climate data around the US with the drought intensity levels from 2000 to 2009. And, uh, and the climate factors include the wind speed, the temperature, the air pressure, the humidity, the rainfall, and some others. And we classify the, the drought level into five uh, classes from zero to four. And of course, uh, because our uh, Real data is pretty large, right? As include 10 years. So to save our uh, computational resources, we only uh, choose two days as our training data. And then as the model training part, we call the AutoML trainer classes to um, train our model. But you can see uh, this classes use many algorithms to train the model and perform the hyperparameter tuning to find the best model. Uh, you can see from uh, zero to six, they try to last GBM, the, uh, and some decision tray algorithm to get the better, uh, to find the best buildings, uh, the, the best models. And the last part is the model inference. We use our best model to on the uh, test data to get the predictions. Uh, those numbers are the drought levels. And, and another amazing thing about AutoML is because it can visualize the model training process. Uh, for example, it can give us the learning curve, the, confu the confusion metrics, the feature importance, uh, with the help of this graph, we uh, it's the the machine learning workflow is not a black box anymore because you can see the, exactly how the machine learning pipeline is constructed uh, with the uh, with a detailed report of each machine learning model, right? So uh, from this, you will uh, know how your model works and how to improve your models. Uh, we can, uh, let's go back to this graph again, the AIGS technology system. So finally, uh, I will use some, uh, I will quick go through, uh, use some uh, applications to see how can AIGS uh, be, com be combined with some other technique like AR or 3D techniques. So if you have a, a phone, you can scan this car and give us their plate. You, you will know that the car plate number, the, the, the car color and the car type. And uh, with, some, with some AR techniques, uh, you can identify some uncivilized behavior and, their, and get their locations. And you can uh, uh, visualize the, the traffic flow and even uh, 
uh, got a real time uh, traffic violation monitoring. And we can even connect uh, AI jazz technique with three with three with D models. Like we can extract the buildings uh, in a three D model, and then we can uh, render them or light them to make our three uh, D license uh, model more vividly. So uh, from this lecture, you can know AI, machine learning, and deep learning are helping us make a better world, right? By fighting crime and because it can help us deploy some predictive policing models and to uh, predict when the next big drought will hit. So it's changed, so it's changed our life a lot. And uh, that's, all, that's all I want to share with you guys. And you can uh, scan this QR code to reach us here. And thank you for your listening. Mm -hmm.